And we're back with some more Star Sector. And Kaiser Soze is incredibly busy. Oh my god, I was worried we would not be able to find enough jobs to do, like, stealthy ones. But, let's see, we have a disrupt a spaceport with Marines. Yeah, so we're going to do a raid on a spaceport. We're going to do a raid on a warehouse. We have to do a jailbreak of a prisoner. Another jailbreak of a prisoner. And we have to do a combat extraction of, I think it's a spy or something, but basically another prison break type things. It's just busy days all around. Like, just, wow. Just so much stuff to do. But first, we're going to stop off at Galatea Academy because we jumped in here and we're right beside it and it turns out it's something on our list from up here. We have to return a data core and go visit some people. Oh, we're, we're not telling you our name. Uh, who knows who's returning this? So, is there still a reward? Okay, yeah, yeah, send the data core over. Yeah, excellent. So, we got... A reward for that? Hmm. Yeah, I think we have to request a meeting with this guy. We'll get another fella out of this, but uh, we'll get a, another contact out of this, but all this is just pretty standard issue storyline stuff. So, anyway, after going through all of that rigmarole, it turns out they have a job for us, one that requires us to buy some technology off pirates. Luckily for us, pirates like us, namely because, well, we've been smuggling for them for ages. Scientific object retrieval. No, 32 light years? I'm not going that far. I have too much stuff to do. Thank you, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm out of here. We, we got way too many jobs to continue with. Right now, our fleet is, well, sort of incredible in terms of hiding. Nope. Uh, we're getting too close to whoever that is. Let's maybe cut that down. Mercenary scout, they won't care about us. Plus, I, yeah, like, look at their detection radius. It's, it's minuscule. They didn't even see us, no matter how close we went. Scavenger, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, I think we can just hide in the asteroid belt, and that would be pretty much invisible to everyone. Oop. And we do have to... Oh, god damn it. We're gonna have to do even more missions. Ah, uh, This is just not fair. Well, it looks like we're taking on another smuggling mission because Kaiser Soze can't say no. Literally, that's the rules we've made. Uh, this thing is just... I think it's Tritac codes. We, we don't need those. Now, unfortunately, we do have to hang around. We, our military options are limited. We need to launch a raid, but we can't do that while this fleet is around. So, we need to get that fleet away from here. They're orbiting the mining station. At some point they will have to leave though, and when they do, we can nip in and do what we need doing. Yeah, there they go. They've gone for a bit. Excellent. Now we can consider our military options. Uh, we need to launch a raid. If we go back to and check under Intel, we have to disrupt the spaceport. Must be disrupted for at least 60 days. I think we can manage that. We want to disrupt it for 60 days. Let's make it 80 days, just to be sure. Uh, this is also... Hmm, you know what? Before we do that, we might want to see if it might be worth doing a little bit more. Looking into it, it's really not worth it doing anything too crazy to this place. So instead, we're just going to do a quick raid. Uh, we don't need to spend any story points on this. We'll just launch the raid. We should have minimal, minimal casualties. 14 Marines lost. Stability reduced. 85 days it's offline, we have completed our objective. Excellent. Now, one thing, when you do this sort of stuff, you can't ever come back to this place for about a month afterwards. For example, if we try and land here, it tells us, yeah, it will take at least a month until the commotion dies down enough for us to actually trade with it. So every time you raid a place, do remember that's something you're going to have to deal with. Which is unfortunate, because one of the combat extractions involves uh, Capitan Starworks, which, yeah, we're kind of friendly with those guys, but... Hey, it is what it is. For our next event, we're going to raid the designated warehouse. And while we're here, I mean, it'd be rude not to at least raid some equipment. Ooh, we're going up to light casualties. You know what? I can accept that. We can accept some light casualties, especially if this gets some mod specs. I would really like to get my hands on those. Okay, light casualties, launch raid. We lost 49 Marines. Relationship with the independence reduced by five. Ooh, sorry about that. Uh, pick through the spoils. Though we did complete the mission, we got our money and... Ah, uh, just weapons, no mod specs. Oh! Heavy armor. Perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it all. That's actually gonna be worth a fair bit of cash. Thank you! Uh, we should probably leave, though, before people come looking for us. One of the downsides of this new fleet... Ow! is it's very expensive to repair. We need to be more careful going through storms, which actually slows us down a little bit. But it's fine, it's fine, we still make it. We're jump keeping the transponder off, immediately cloak up. Ooh. That's how, that's their detection range for us. They can, we are almost invisible. Kaiser Soze cannot be seen unless he wants to be. And even moving at cloaked speed, we move at speed nine. 
which is kind of good. Uh, all right. Tartarus, Lenox Church. What are we here for again? I think we're here for a prisoner raid. A prisoner extraction? I'm not sure. Active sensor burst. Good luck with that, buddy. Uh, we need to get around the back of this guy. We... Oh, damn it. Too many patrols. We might have to mess with their sensors just to have any hope. Yeah, makeshift sensor away. Let's go mess with their sensors before we raid here. The problem is we won't be able to do a successful raid if there's fleets anywhere nearby. And we're running out of time for a bunch of missions. Oh, would you look at that? There's a little fleet guarding the sensor array. They're not very good at it, but they're trying. All right, let's hack this. Introduce false, reading, false readings. Yeah, let's get out of here. And they're off to investigating anomalous sensor readings. I wonder what happened there. Oh, well. All right, getting back. We have, oh my god, a faithful convoy. Oh, I need all you guys to leave. Returning to... Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no little church patrols seem to be here yet. And a wonderful opportunity for doing business with parties untroubled. Oh, this was a smuggling mission. This wasn't a raid one. I'm getting confused. There's too many things to do. Well, we've got a bit of a problem. I have lollygagged about too much. There's a combat extraction we're not going to make at Captech Starbucks, but I'm kind of okay with that. I didn't want to annoy the pirates anyway. We've just gotten friendly with them. We've got 13 favorable with the pirates, which is probably the best I've ever had it. In fact, we are just about favorable with everyone. Minus six with the independents, but we can fix that if needs be. And we've got two very good contacts at Captech Starworks. Anyway, we're going to go on a long dead drop. I'm, I'm not going to do the dead drops anymore. They're too far away from the core worlds and they take us away from a mission. So no more dead drops. It's all going to be jailbreaks, dropping off spy satellites, smuggling missions, that type of stuff. That way we can get more done faster. We need to crank up our uh, support from everyone so we can get our hands on some phantom troop transports. And then let's go about decivilizing this, the universe. Looking at the system where we were doing the dead drop, uh, there seems to be pirates located around here. Um, honestly, not too concerned. Makeshift buoy, makeshift sensor array. I don't think they're... In fact, I'm not even going to go in slow. We're going to go in at 13 burn speed because we can. Dead drop complete. Uh, Gilgamesh likes us even more. Let's hope he has even better missions for us by the time we get home. Fortunately, this is... Oh, those jailbreaks are going to be tight. And which is the closest one? You know what? We'll go for this jailbreak first, then we'll do the second one. Oh, the downside of all of these rules, though, is we, we just have to do so many missions. Okay. Mm, okay, we'll do this one. This one is basically, we have to go and drop a spice on in. They're really handy. We have 120 days to do it. Uh, we also have to do a prisoner extraction here. No, no, no. Launch a raid. Yeah, let's go grab this. We would like to uh, do a jailbreak operation. Oh, heavy casualties. That's not good. We have a corrupted nanoforge? Oh, we can't afford that. Right, so... Yeah, heavy casualties no matter what we do. Really should have brought more troops. You know what? Let's see if we can actually buy more troops here while we're here. Not enough. This is going to hurt. Oh, we need to be more careful. Orbital works. They have an orbital works here. Yeah, I can see why this place is so well defended. All right. Oh, should we spend a story point? I think we have about five or six of them left. And I think to save the Marines? Yeah, I think we're going to have to do it. I don't like doing it. But it should be done. Yeah, we have six remaining. Continue. Uh, we have the complete. We lost 117 marines there. Ouch. Oof. But on the bright side, I think everyone's happier. We probably could have just spent the story point and uh, just bought the prisoner back. It would have been cheaper, and we wouldn't have lost so many marines. However, does that help our marine quality? No, we just lost more of them. All right, next mission. We need to like the the main thing we're trying to do while we're here is we want to get our hands on. Phantoms. Phantom troop transports. Ooh, acquire artifact. Hmm. I'm going to have to go get that one in a bit. Oh, no time load on that one. That one's good. All right, let me do a few more jailbreaks uh, and a spy sat deployment. And oh my god, there's just so many things for the Kaiser to be doing. Now, I've been doing a whole bunch of missions in the background just to try and grind up some money and get our contacts to like us more. This guy's up to 93%. I'm hoping at some point he'll give us another build mission and we can get our hands on those phantom classes. However, there's another thing that's going on. We've got hand of these, uh, here's the location of a blueprint. There's a blueprint located somewhere in the system, go find it. I've already done one of those and it led to a science facility. This one seems to have led to an orbital habitat. I used to have a hard time, like, locating all the orbital habitats and research facilities, but if we can find them via quests and get them marked out, this makes things much simpler. Oh, we just gained 60 crew, that's nice, but if we do a salvage operation, do we get... No. I was expecting us to get that blueprint. However, oh god. 
Yeah, we're way overburdened. One second while we dump some of this steel. No, thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, food. Yeah, no, we can leave that behind. We have got a whole bunch of tasty blueprints, though, out of this so far. But uh, where we want to go now... Oop. Active sensor burst. Needed to get out of range of that. There is a jungle world over here, and judging by the debris around it, it's got ancient ruins. So if we... Oh, you found us? No, they're turning around and running away. Wow, they just appeared out of nowhere. They were pretty much as stealthy as we were. All right, if we prefer... For, oh, before we perform a survey, I should probably point something out here. If you zoom in here, you can see little satellite things around it. This means this world used to be habitable. Or habited. Inhabited? Jeez. Sorry, it's been a... It's been a long night. Anyway, this used to be a habitable... Habited... Ah. This used to be an inhabited planet. And as such, there should be ancient ruins. So if we perform a survey... Yeah, 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 moderate widespread ruins. Now, what's the bet if we scan those ruins, we will find the intel we were looking for? Uh, for example, if we go to intel here, we can, we're can we looking for the Thunderwing blueprint. And if we go back here, explore, continue, begin salvage operations, no Thunderwing blueprint. God damn it. Okay, I'm going to need to do some more searching, I think. Okay, we finally found the Thunderwing blueprint. It was located in one of these derelict hulks. It was a derelict Enforcer class destroyer. By uh, salvaging that, we managed to get our hands on the blueprint. Whew. Uh, yeah, and we'll just go through the last of these and salvage whatever else is left. We don't need most of this stuff and we don't really care. We just came out here to clear up the intel screen. I like to have a clean intel screen. What can I say? After doing a lot of missions and hammering out a lot of stuff. In fact, we've even gotten rid of some of the um, the contacts that were showing up. We, we just deleted them. There was no point keeping them around. We, have so, we had so many potential pirate contacts. It was crazy from all the missions we were doing. We have come back to Captain Starworks. Again, Captain Starworks. And finally, it's happened. Our contact, the one who has been so gracious to us before, has finally got arms procurement up again, 1.2 million worth of credits, and the Phantom has appeared. Now, this Phantom is basically troop transport, and for the next stage of our plan, we're going to need one. Now, it carries a default of about 200 crew, and it has this thing called advanced ground support, which means those 200 marines will get a, a double combat bonus, or it'll double their combat bonus, makes them really good. And for what we're going to do, we're going to need a few of them. Like, an awful few of them. Yeah, 10 is the most we can build. In fact, we will take all of them. We are we are going to buy a quarter of a million of those things. And we could buy Dooms and other phase class frigates. And no, 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 no. We're not fighting. Well, we're not fighting in the air. We're, we're going with an, an entire marine-based approach. And we're going to destroy this world, or system, but only with the marines. Anyway, we're going to confirm that. That's going to take a while. Oh, 60 days. Fine, fine, fine. While that is going on, we are going to take care of a side mission, and I can explain the plan. Now, I have popped over to a nearby system, so we can go into their buy and sell section, see all the stuff they sell. But if we go under their colony info, we can get us all this stuff. And what we're going to do is, we're going to shatter one of their industries and take it over. For example, these are all the places in all of the systems that produce luxury goods, or domestic goods. If we were to go along and systematically decivilize each one of these worlds by, say, raiding them lots and lots of times with marines until eventually they all decivilized and stopped producing, and then made our own colony that produced domestic goods, we would have quartered the market. We would be able to make a fortune selling it. In fact, we could produce a whole bunch, turn off our... Well, let's just say there's ways we can manipulate it so that we can make absolutely oodles of money. Unfortunately, there's a lot of colonies to kill her. That's, that's way too many. So really, it's only narrowed down to two options. One is supplies, heavy weapons, and... Oh, what's the third one? Yeah, never mind. There's supplies, heavy weapons, and I think it's ship components. All of them are produced by the same type of thing, so all the colonies are the same involving it. As you can see, there's a fair few of them. There's only eight. Eight is not bad, but what's better is five. If we knock out all of the critical fuel producers, we only have to decivilize five planets. It will not be simple, but it will only put us at odds with the Sindrian Diktat, the uh, Persian League, and the Hegemony. We can wipe out all, well, we'll annoy all three of those, but at the same time, once we've wiped them all out, we can make oodles of cash. It just requires lots and lots and lots and lots of Marines and a lot of really good combat skills. Which reminds me, there's, there's one other thing we have to do. We need to go under character. And the skill point, I haven't assigned it out until now because I want to put it into tactical drills. Not because of the weapon damage, but because of the ground operations. 
plus 50% effectiveness of ground operations such as raids, minus 25% marine casualties suffered during ground operations such as raids. So, yes, we're going to definitely need this for our playstyle. I really would have liked to get some salvaging, that would have been nice, field repairs, there's all sorts of stuff that would have been good, but that is going to be absolutely essential if we want to wipe out this entire system, or bring it to its knees using just marines. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to head back over to Galatea. We're going to go to the Gal Galatea Academy and we're going to start doing the missions there. We want to knock out one of the side missions that's going to activate some uh, fancy gates. There's these gates that are around the place that will make travel faster and make our lives an awful lot easier. So I'm going to do some grunt missions for this guy over there until he gives us that mission and then I'll cut back in. After doing a bunch more grunt missions for that guy, we've actually managed to raise his liking of us to about 50 plus. So we should be able to get the, uh, the final mission we're looking for to activate the gates. But our ships have come in, literally. So if we go under fleet and we check under storage and under take, would you behold the phantoms? Lots and lots. And one of them has a demod. That's good. It's just, uh, these ships we bought, the phase tenders, or what you call them, the Revenant class ships. These ones, one of them came with a demod, I don't know why. Uh, demod is one of those negative things attached to it, so this one has coil, phase coil instability. I don't know why it started with it, and honestly, I don't care. But let's take all of these ships, and then let's make a few changes to them. Oof. We could need more crew? Wow, I am shocked that we don't need more crew to support it. Oh wait, actually, we kind of do, don't we? Wait, no, not that much. These things must be very light on it. Skeleton crew required five. Oh. Well, uh, I think we can store this ship again. We took this ship out of storage so we could do a long range mission for that uh, annoying guy over at Galatea. Let me do a few changes here. All we have done here is stuck on the augmented drive field, combined with the fact that they automatically get the plus two burn from our skill over here. Where is this skill again? Ah uh, yes, bulk transport. For some reason, the game thinks these are non-militarized civilian grade ships. I don't know why. I'm not going to complain. All I know is that these ships now have a base movement speed of 13. Yes, uh, these have a base movement speed of 12. Uh, we are going to put this ship into storage because it's just slowing us down. And we are going to retire this ship, this custom troop transport. We don't need it. Uh, this is actually just a weaker version of the Phantom. So, sail time? Yeah, actually, I think we can just sell it. If we scrap it, it's not actually... Uh, actually, considering how desperate we are right now, we might want to just... Yeah, we'll just scuttle it and take the parts. Ooh, that looks like a awesome fleet, if really, really expensive to run. We'll go pop back out, and we can see that we're going to burn 5.4 supplies a day on this fleet. That is insane. But our sensor profile has dropped to 17. That, oh, I think we're in an asteroid field. Yeah, that's probably why we're so incredibly small. But that, that's fine. That's fine. So, what's the plan then? Well, now that we've got those ships, I think I'll put them in storage for a bit. We've got a little storage section over here. It's called the Abandoned Mistropolis or whatever. It's close to this location, so that's why I picked it. We're going to pop right over there. In fact, we are just going to immediately jump. And then once we've popped over there, we're going to drop off most of these ships just for a while. We don't need them just yet. Wow, 40 supplies per day. That is insanely expensive. Yeah, let's move a little bit quicker, shall we? This is, uh, time is literally money with this sort of fleet. So this location is one of three scattered around the map. It allows you to store stuff. Uh, I believe the other locations are... There's one in Mas Ma Mayasura, one in YMA, and one in, is it Corvus? Ah, yes, one in Corvus, there is the, yeah, the abandoned terraforming platform. So there's one in each of those three systems. So you kind of have to pick where you want to set up your base. Personally, I like this one because it's close to the Capitan Starworks, which is where we get a lot of our missions. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go in here, transfer goods, go under fleet, and we're going to store some of these suckers for later. We just don't need them all right now. Uh, I think two should be sufficient for our needs for now. Ooh, and in fact, we will store the ship also. So we might need three of the phantoms. Yeah, we'll take a third one. Like, yeah, we, we're going to be doing some raiding, but we do have to set up a colony to produce fuel first. There's, there's a few little side projects. But first, we had to head all the way over to Galatea. And this guy, we finally got friendly with him. Now, this is the Galatea chess quit. Galatea chess quest chain. If you've never done it, it's basically just, you, you go here, the guy talks to you a bunch, you basically just do missions for the missions like anyone else. But the one that's important is this, ask about the Tritachion Black Sight extraction mission. 
we need to do this. And done. Okay, so I went around and did all of the little side missions. Basically, they're just fetch quests. Lots of fetch quests. You don't even have to fight anyone. We did actually do a little bit of raiding, but you can avoid that as well. As long as you're willing to spend a story point or two, you can pretty much get through all of this without combat, without sneak, without anything. But we used the sneaking, of course, and a little bit of raiding. But now all these gates are active and we can instantly teleport between them. And now I think it's time we, you know, started cranking out sort of mid-game money so that we can really get around to, well, sort of decivilizing this sector of space. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to go to the Ludic Church, and we want to say hello to them, and we're going to go and talk to Station Commander. We would like to be commissioned by the Ludic Church. We actually have, we have to get our favour with them up to above 10, but as long as you have that, you can be commissioned by them. They'll basically pay us 45 grand a month, just to be Ludic Church people. Okay, but that's not... Uh, it also causes a few problems. It means our relations with everyone they're enemies with goes to minus 50, but the only people they're currently enemies with are pirates, so we don't really care. Now, eh, one other thing we wanted to do, we will, yeah, we'll buy all of those. We want to go and colonize a planet in the system. Where is it? Eh, can. Can I? Whatever. We are going to colonize the system. Now, the reason we made friends with the little church that way and became commissioned by them is if we tried to colonize this planet and we weren't friends with them, they would saturation bombard it from space and destroy the entire planet. But so long as we're on their side, they're perfectly fine with us setting up a colony in their system. Hmm. Verbal shall be added to our place. Oh, actually, what are we going to have as a flag? I feel like a lot of the flags in here are rather boring. Yeah, I think the skull's just a little bit too obvious. So, Kaiser Soze. Uh, hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. We can't be calling it the Soze Coalition. That's just a little bit too uh, public. We need a name that no one thinks is going to be evil. You know, people just automatically assume, oh, they're not bad guys with a name like that. So there we go. I think that that should be a good cover name. Canada. All ships will get prefixed with boot. So, uh, yeah, that sounds, that sounds a bit good. All right, we got a spaceport being built. But uh, more importantly, we're also going to want to get, where is it? A way station built. The moment that's available. The moment we can uh, build one, we will. But that will be 15 days from now. Uh, well, that's doing its thing. Like, this place is not exactly great, to be honest. Ooh, 152 crew. Thank you, we'll take those. We're gonna need that crew. Well, that's one colony started. Uh, we are going to immediately start a second one. Where did I put you? Hmm. Yeah, we'll pop over here and grab some more crew. Then we'll fly right back over to Ash. Ooh. No, look at church watchers. At Yeah, we still gotta keep an eye out for those. In fact... Since we're going to be staying in here, and there's one stability makeshift sensor array, hmm, we might want to install another sensor in this system. All right, Asher. Thank you. We would like to buy all of your people. Nice. Now we can form another colony. Oh, uh, this thing in here, this is the Janus device. It's what allows you to use all the gates that we've got knocking about the place. You can't get rid of it. It's stuck in your inventory forever, but uh, we, we don't mind. We kind of like it there. Now, where was that other planet? Uh, I think it was actually back here. Yeah, I probably should have done this in reverse order, but we're going to colonize the second planet. We're not going to colonize the gas giant. That might be a little bit too close. That's Faithful Convoy, Faithful Convoy, and Watchers. I was going to make visiting this planet interesting. Uh, second thoughts, yeah, you know what? That gas giant looks just fine. All right, gas giant, let's establish a colony. Yep, 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 we shall establish one. Nothing to see. Nothing to see at all at all. Excellent. Oh, I should probably change these places as well. We want to give hazard pay, which, oh god, uh, can we make it a free port to that help? You know what, we'll, we'll leave this off. We're not going to introduce hazard pay or anything like that until after we've got a spaceport up and running in both of these locations. All right, that will take about 15 days. In the meantime, let's go buy ourselves a bunch of marines and start messing up a whole bunch of colonies. Where's the closest place to buy them? Ah, Kyoil in Madeira. Oh, actually, let's go to Esconia. And I can show you how the gates work, because they make life so much simpler. We're going to lay in a course for the gates. Uh, who are you? Unidentified fleet. Raiding. Oh, it's okay. It's probably just pirates. All right, so we're going to head down here. We're going to pop into this gate. Travel through it. And we can go straight to Esconia. Any place that has a gate in it, we can instantly transit. Done. And we just pop out the other side. It costs you, I think, half as much fuel, but... It costs you half as much fuel as if you had it went through hyperspace. It's supposed to cost you the full amount, but supposedly there's some problem with it. I don't care. Ooh. Missed us. 
we have actually run into one ship during all of our travels and we got caught by one fleet, but we used a story point to talk our way out of it. So, so far, we have only been caught by one fleet. I think we're doing pretty good. And, yeah, let's not go near that station. It looks like it's having a busy day. From now on, we are going heavy on the Marines. We're going to need lots of them. Uh, yeah, we're going to buy them on the open market and we're also going to buy them on the private market. We want everything. We want to probably go up to about 2,000 Marines. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of them. You, come here. Give me all of you. I don't care if we're buying them for more expense. I just want to find the places that have the most we are willing to splurge right about now. Give me a few minutes while I collect as many Marines as possible. 2,439 Marines. And that's the way we like it. Also, I have went back and grabbed all of our fleets, so we've got all of our Phantoms. Now, these things, they're a... Uh, their bonus from the Advanced Ground Support Package affects 200 Marines. So that means that with all of those guys on board, 2,000 of our Marines are getting a double effectiveness bonus, as in they're twice effective. Meaning they're, they've got the strength of... well, the 2,000 Marines have the strength of 4,000 Marines, whatever, something along those lines, I believe. Uh, at the same time, we've went back to our uh, our planets here, and they have finished the construction of a couple of projects. They finished the spaceport, and we stuck in way stations. These things are sort of, well, they're not free, you have to pay for them, but once they're, they don't actually take up any production slots or anything like that, and what they do is it allows you to stockpile supplies and fuel. You see, if you go in here normally, all you'll have is just people. You can stockpile crew here, but you can't stockpile the other stuff. We want a stockpile of supplies and fuel. Normally, you could just go and buy this stuff en, en masse from everywhere around the place, but we can't ever turn on a transponder, which means we can't trade on the open market. In the open market, if you want to buy thousands of supplies or thousands of fuel, that's the only place you're going to get it. So we can buy it from here and we get it at basically regular prices. This costs $25 a, for whatever, $25, 25 cents? Actually, I'm not even sure what the credits, 25 credits. This costs 25 credits per piece of fuel. That is really good. Now, it doesn't actually charge us immediately. It charges us at the end of the month, but I'm okay with that. And these things just keep regenerating. It's great we have a renewable source of supplies that will be charged 100 for and fuel that will be charged 25 for by default now all we got to do is drive up the prices of fuel and supplies everywhere else to ridiculous levels so that we can make a bunch of profit we don't even have to now bear in mind we don't need any production of supplies we don't need any production of fuel this stuff will just magically appear here and we're going to use that to break things pretty hard all right, in here, we're going to make a few changes as well. This spaceport, we want to upgrade it to a megaport. Uh, this will cost 300 grand. Yeah, sure, we will We will pay it. And we also add an industry, I think. Ooh, heavy industry? Yes, I think heavy industry would be nice. That's really expensive, though. Half a million? Yeah, yeah, we could, we could do that. Ouch. Also, at the same time, we are going to make this... Oh, we are going to make this place hazard pay, which costs us 22 grand a month. We are also going to make it a free port. But uh, one thing to notice... See this population growth up here? We put on hazard pay, it goes up to 7.67, and we put on free port, it goes up to 9%. This means this place is growing at quite a nice rate. 9% a month means about, ooh, in about 11 months from now, this place is going to go up a population level. We need to get the population here, which is currently at 3, up to 5. So in about, say, a year, it'll go up to 4, and another year after that, it'll go up to 5. Once it's at 5, we can stop being allied with the church, and they won't blow the crap out of this place. Because currently, no, no faction will uh, saturation bombardment a planet if it's got a population of five or greater. Something to do with war crimes or, I don't know, something like that. Wusses. Anyway, if we go into command here, we can actually go and do all of the building in the other place without even going there. So if you don't want to go to a place, you can do it from the command structure. You can say, oh, I would like to upgrade that to a megaport. Thank you. And then for structures in here... I think I like the look of fuel production. We might actually tear this down later on for bizarre reasons, but it's fine. We'll, we'll build that there. We're down to a million credits, though. We're going to need to start making some dough very, very soon. Also, hazard pay, free port. Oh, God. So that's uh, it's going to cost us a lot of money. All of this free porting and stuff. Not cheap. All right, so that's both of our colonies managed. Now it's time to make ourselves some cheddar. Do that. Well, there's a few planets we want to hit up. Uh, let's see. The first one is Eos Exodus. Wait, no. Actually, we're going to go up here to Kumari Kadat. Can can whatever. I can't pronounce these things. Uh, Chelsea Don from the Ludic Path. We're going to head over there, and we're going to give them a very bad day. Actually, let's just use the gates. Uh, oh, you know what? I should probably add another stable point in here. But we're going to head over there, and we're going to use our Marines to generate some demand. Now, you may be wondering how we're going to generate demand with Marines, but that's that's okay. This is uh, this is just the joy of the game. Uh, initiate transit. Let's go. And let's uh, make sure we go dark before we teleport through. All right, where are you, Chelsea Dawn? Now, 
we're going to have to go to a little bit of how the market works in this game. And while it might seem like this game is very complex, uh, the market is actually bizarrely simple. Like, incredibly simple. Uh, where are you going? You are returning to Chelsea, Don. Well, that's fine. We are going to go have a look at the place. Right, what's our military options? No, no, we'll worry about the military options in a second. First, let's just have a... Basically, just go through trade. It's actually rather simple. So to explain this, we've brought up the supply screen. This is basically all the consumers of supplies everywhere, and it effectively includes every planet. Every single planet wants supplies. There's no way to escape it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sort by access. Access is how accessible that particular location is. For example, this place has 24% accessibility. It's just to do with a mix of factors, including how many ho how many fractions you're hostile with, how close you are to the center of the galaxy, colony size, spaceport, whether or not you've got one, a few things like that. However, the thing to understand is this person here is at 24% accessibility. Between 20 to 30%, you're allowed to import two things from everyone else. Between 30 to 40 percent, you can insert three. Between 40 to 50, you can import four. Basically, every 10 percentage points, you're able to import one more thing from other people. So, for example, Epiphany here, they want four supplies. They have an import, uh, an access quality of 27 percent, meaning they're only able to import two. So they're only able to get two supplies, meaning they've got a deficit there and they need those other two, which they can't get. I think there's a little bit of a trade opportunity there if you want. However, there's other things that can affect this. For example, Chelsea down here wants five, but it's getting zero. But there's, since there's other things affecting it, namely recent incoming shipment lost. Because it had a recent incoming shipment lost, that gave it a minus two. And by the fact that it was only getting two to begin with means it's got zero right now. Uh, so if you ever see a place and suddenly there's a massive spike in the price of something, usually heavy armaments or drugs, it's because they are small quantity items. Usually most places only want somewhere between two to five of them. A minus two to that usually drives up the prices massively. So that's one of those reasons you'll see spikes. Then there's one other thing. People's accessibility can suddenly plummet, and you're, you're, you'll wonder why. For example, Anhof down here, whatever it's called, that weird Nordic sounding name, it's got minus 30% accessibility due to pirate activity. This is because pirates are targeting that section. In fact, you can even look it up. If we go into Intel here and go under hostilities, no wait, exploration. Ah, this is Western S where that Anhof thing is, the, the planet with the, uh, the pirate activity. And you'll see there's actually a mission here. The pirates have established a base in this sector. Uh, the base serves as a staging ground for raids against nearby colonies. Uh, the pirates are opening this, have been targeting this system. So every single planet in this system is now getting a minus 30% of their accessibility because pirates are raiding it. It's the exact same in this system and it's the exact same in this system. You can see all the, uh, the red lines there coming from the different pirate bases. So if you were looking for trade opportunities, you might want to target those places. However, there's other stuff on top of that that makes it a little bit more wonky. Let's go back under consumers here and check access again. You're looking for planets with really low access. For example, can, can I here? They have three supplies coming in. How? They have an accessibility of zero. Literally zero. They shouldn't be able to import from anyone. However, there's a little thing here that I haven't covered yet, and that is same faction imports and exports. If you're importing stuff from your own faction, you get a bonus. You can always, always, always import five units of stuff from your own faction. Well, unless you get hit by that minus two, you know, recently rated shipment thing. So what this means is Kanai here is importing those three supplies from their local production center, which is actually Capitan Starworks. Capitan Starworks is a producer of supplies and they can produce three of them, which means this place here, Kanai, is able to get three and that's the same with Katana's Den. They have zero accessibility, but they're still getting three supplies. They're getting them all from Capitan Starworks because they're able to get five, up to five items from their local suppliers, as in another pirate faction or another pirate base. This is why Ludic Path are in a terrible position. They have literally no supplies production throughout their entire chain. They only have two colonies and neither of those colonies produce supplies. Leaves them in a bit of a rough spot. And we're going to prey upon that. And we're also going to prey upon the pirates. What we can do here is, uh, let's look at, actually let's go back out here to Chelsea. Right now, they're able to import still luxury goods and marines. Uh, unfortunately, the minus two they're getting has kind of messed them up on all these other fronts, but that's fine. We're just going to make this worse. Uh, if you check for everything from fuel down, uh, you'll see they've got a few points they're still getting in, but we're going to make that considerably worse. We're going to launch a raid against here. Uh, we are going to oh disrupt the operations of a specific industry or facility, and we're going to target the spaceport. And the reason we're targeting the spaceport is it has an accessibility bonus of uh, plus 50%. So if we go back out here just before we launch it, and we check under the colony, and we check under whatever they're consuming. 
we can actually see their access there is at 24%. But they're getting 50% of that excess from spaceports. Well, they've actually got a lot of negatives going on, but they're getting a plus 50% from the spaceport. If that spaceport was to, say, go offline, their accessibility would drop to absolute zero, meaning everything from about, I think, fuel down is not made by their faction, so all of that would redline, every single last bit of it. And if we did the same to Epiphany, then all of their stuff would redline. So, let's uh, consider our military options. Launch a raid against Chalcedon, disrupt the operations of a specific facility, and pick their starport, and then pile people in. Yeah, I'm thinking 200 days offline should cause them a little bit of a negative problem. So if we select that, yeah, that's uh, projected raid effectiveness, 98%. We will launch that raid. We lost 31 Marines, but uh, we also re reduced the stability. We'll, we'll cover more on that in a minute. Gained a bunch of experience, lots of nice stuff. Excellent. Now, we can't trade with this colony for about six weeks because they're going to be a bit annoyed with us. But if you come back in here, you can see that this spaceport, this building right here, ha has been disrupted for 222 days, which means they're going to have a minus 50% for their accessibility, and everything from fuel down is redlined. So now, for 222 days, this will all be offline, as in they will have to buy it all from outside sources. And that outside source will be us. We're going to make a fortune. Well, we'll have to wait six weeks. Now, they do have one other colony as well. We're going to go visit them and, uh, yeah, we're going to do the same thing to them while we're there. That other colony is, ah, yes, Epiphany from Lytic Path. Well, I mean, don't feel bad for them. They're space terrorists. Tr well, okay, we're going to be supplying the space terrorists with supplies then. But it's not like, hmm, you know what? Let's not just think about it. We're just here to make a reasonable amount of money so that we can do more unreasonable things to this entire sector. Now, this will happen occasionally. They've got an actual patrol around, so we, well, we basically hang around outside until the patrol buggers off or gets far enough away that we're able to nip in and make a do quick raid. Uh, sometimes you can get them just far enough. No, see, we can't do any of this while there's a fleet nearby. Now, normally, if it was a place that cared, I would, you know, make myself visible to them by uh, cranking up our engines or something like that so that they would chase us. Then I'd sneak back around and smash the place while they weren't looking. However, these guys appear to be being real sneaky about it. So fine, we'll wait until they push off and then we'll raid the place. With that place raided, it's time to hit up a few other places. Uh, namely the pirates. We want to mess up their supply chains as well. Now, I want to look at Umbra and Kuras. Now, where did I put Umbra? Ah, here we go. Umbra, uh, where are you? You are, oh god, you're, yeah, this one's miles away. This one's actually an annoying one to get to, but that's okay. Oh, and these guys don't actually care. Ludic Path don't care if you have your transponder off, so... Hey, are you chasing us? Oh my god, I can't believe you're actually trying to chase us. Your speed maximum burn is 11. You're not catching us, buddy. Good luck with that. Oh, if you're wondering, I managed to get rid of the transponder from there. It turns out you can just click in here and remove it, so I just cleared this ability slot, so I don't... Every so often, I'd accidentally hit one when I was going through somewhere or something like that. It's like, nope, nope, get rid of it. Ooh. Character point. We've got a, uh, a skill point we can dish out, and since we're not allowed to actually get into fights, that entire tier is useless to us. Uh, pretty much all of this is useless to us as well. We don't need officers for our fleets, so I'm pretty sure this is also useless to us, and maybe... Yep, there is not a single skill we can use here. It's all combat related. This game is pretty much a combat simulator, and we're doing the one thing you're not supposed to do, which is just avoid all the combat for, for because we're trying to be stealthy. Well, it is Kaiser Soze, so tough. Um, let's see, I think this one's probably our best bet. Reduces monthly supply consumption of our ships. Our, our, your fleet requires a base of 145 supplies per month for maintenance. That seems like a lot. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll try and reduce that a bit. That, that could save us a tiny, tiny scoots of cash. Uh, let's get moving. This base movement speed of 13 is just kind of incredible. All right, you. Oh, pirates, little church, canal system, whatever. Okay, you, we want to consider our military options. Actually, do you have any Marines we could buy? Ooh, you have a stockpile of excess. You know what? We will take some more. In fact, we're going to take all of them. Thank you kindly. Can't buy the pirate military ones, unfortunately. Oh, well. Ooh, do you want drugs? Yes, you do. Well, we have a meaning to make a bit of money. Let's just tie this over until we get into the good stuff. Here, we are going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to rent, launch a raid against this place and disrupt a specific industry straight to the spaceport. In fact, if you just right-click it, it maximizes. We don't have to do all that selecting. Done, 95%, launch raid. Ooh, we lost 139. That's actually a little expensive. Now, if we check, actually go back, we view the colony info. Here we go. Now, you'll see spaceport is offline for them. That's going to hurt them as well. However, you'll see they're still getting supplies in. Even though their accessibility rating has gone to minus 28%, they're still getting into supplies. That's because if Capitan Starworks 
which is a local producer, but we'll get around to Capitan Starworks in a bit. Uh, there's one other pirate base we want to knock out first. I believe that is Curass. Uh, where are you? I think Curass is over here somewhere. Yep, that one. Let's go hop into a gate and pop over there. Curass? Curass? Whatever, I'm terrible at the name pronunciation. This place is... Ooh, you need six supplies? Oh, you are in so much trouble. Their accessibility is 38%. The moment we knock out that spaceport, it goes to hell. However, they do have heavy batteries. Their defenses are probably the best we've encountered so far. However, we... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. We don't want to do an orbital bombardment. Not for... We, we don't need that type of stuff. What we're going to do here is... How much is that going to cost? It's still minimal casualties. Because of all the ships we've bought and the way we've engineered all of this, we're actually pretty good. 47 Marines lost. Though we are racking up the experience quite nicely. Uh, let's check out how your colony's doing. Yeah, everything's still pretty rough, but it's not as bad as you would think just yet. We have one last stop to make before we start money pumping. Uh, we got to go and hit up... Where is it? Uh, Capitan Starworks over here. So that place has got a gate inside it, has it? Yes, it does, right there. So let's hop right back into the gate and pop over there and uh, really mess up the pirate's day. Our monthly expenses are 68 grand. That, um, that hurt. That hurt. Oh my god. Uh, uh, well, never mind. We'll go over and do Capitan Starworks and then we can start making some serious money. You pop right over there. Uh, yeah, they're not. I can't see us. We'll just keep that. We'll keep it a high burn and smack into as many things along the way as we possibly can. Or we should probably cloak just a little bit. Now, this is where things get a little bit more broken. Now, if we check under supplies here, and we go under consumers, we check access. We want to go by the lowest access. You'll see that the lowest access people are Umbra, where we bombarded them, uh, Chalcedon, Epiphany, and Curas. These are all places that we've smacked about the place. So literally all of these places have now been reduced to zero. And you know, it's the Chalcedon and Epiphany who don't have their local sourcing. Yeah, they, they, they're pretty much maxed out. They're going to pay 313 per supply. If you if we sold them 750 units, they'd pay us 313 per supply. That's nuts. That's uh, triple the cost per supply. So here, we're not going to target the spaceport. Hell no. We're going to talk about the Orbital Works. The Orbital Works produces their supplies. So this produces all of the supplies for the pirate systems. None of those other places are getting supplies from anywhere else but this exact facility right here on this planet. So, if we were to, say, consider our military options, launch a raid, and then disrupt the operations of a specific industry and instead pick the orbital works, we're going to get minimal losses. This is still going to hurt, but select that. Yeah, 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 launch raid. Cost us 43 marines. Uh, it's taken it offline for 232 days. We've also... Leveled up to uh, level 7. Excellent. Uh, let's view the quality info and things are going to be interesting in here. Alright, firstly, let's go under consumers and start sorting by access again. You will notice everyone here at the bottom is now redlined. Umbra are willing to pay 317 per supply for 750 units. Uh, Curas, same thing. Chalcedon also willing to pay just obscene amounts of money. Who's got fuel? Uh, let's check fuel down here and sort by access. So Umbra, they're willing to pay 79 for fuel. We can buy it for 25. Yeah, so we've just created a massive market that will last for about 200 days. Now we just have to go and exploit the bejesus out of this, and we can use that to build up our colonies. Uh, like, our money has been plummeting since we started those colonies, but now our money's about to go the opposite direction. Back at our home colony of Verbal, if we just pop in here, oh, repair our ships, uh, we can go to manage the colony, and our resource stockpiles have increased dramatically. You'll notice we have... 1,900 supplies to draw upon, which we can pay 100 for. Honestly, trying to other way of generate supplies, I just can't figure out a way to do it that's not just quite as broken as this. This is going to cost us about 200 grand, but that's all right. We'll take all of that, and uh, we'll actually top up on fuel while we're here. Why not? Uh, we've still got all these marines, which we can't really use for anything for a while, but we're going to pay the bills on them, namely because they have served us so well. We're going to be able to churn out a lot of money. Oh, and we still have space in our hold, so we can just pop over to our other place. Where is it? Nothing to see here. They also have uh, one of those little way station things installed, so we can pop right over there. Go down to manage colony, and we can top up the last of the way in supplies. Done. Um, you know what? We could store this stuff here, but I don't really... Mm, never mind. We'll do that later. Let's go and do our first trade run. And I think the best thing to do would probably be pop over to the first place we smashed. Chalcedon, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Chalcedon. Um, 
Yeah, let's just go over here and make sure that they're no longer angry with us. It takes them about six weeks. I'm not sure if it's been six weeks since we raided them. Oh, and we should probably take the gate. I wonder if they're still a wee bit angry. Ugh. It'll take at least a week before the commotion dies down. Come on. It wasn't that bad. Walk it off. While waiting to, for them to get over their hissy fit, I went back and picked up the rest of our revenants. We got a, a second offer of them and I bought five. It cost us, uh, I think, about 800 grand at the time, but I think it's totally worth it for now. That means we've been able to load up on a bunch more supplies and fuel, which we can now sell for even more extreme profits. Uh, let's see. Yay, they don't hate us anymore. Let's go to the black market. Wow, you can pay... 3,000, you want 3,750 units? No, we're not willing to sell you that many. Let me let me do a bit of checking here. When it comes to selling here, we want to make triples, triple profit. So every, we sold them 1,225 supplies. We sold them all for an average of 300 apiece, which means we made 200 bucks profit on each one. Same with the fuel. Cost us 25, we sell it for 75. This means we got about 245 grand's profit on the supplies. We got about 62 grand's profit on the fuel. And done. That's one trade. Now I'm going to hit up all the places we've raided, as in, this is Chalcedon. We're going to hit up Epiphany, Umbra, and Kiras. Uh, Epiphany is the other lucid, loop, uh, path, the other pathers. Uh, Umbra and Kiras are the pirate ones. I'm just going to go through all of those, and then I'll come back with the numbers. Ooh, 700 grand expenses. They charge you at the end of the month for all the supplies you took. We took a lot of supplies and fuel, but that's okay. We, we make it all back in trade. Probably. <laughs> in all fairness, I haven't tried exploiting it this stupidly. This is my first time exploiting it this badly. Alright, let's go and make sure that these guys are willing to trade. Oh, come on. You're still bitter about that? Fine, we'll wait a week. Here we are on our last stop, Cur Curass. Now, checking the numbers, we made a profit of about 1.3 million. That's profit. That's excluding all of the costs and everything that went into buying all the supplies and fuel from ourselves, technically. So you can make about 1.3 million in profit. And here's the thing. By the time you get to the end, the starting location... Where is it? Uh, consumers, access... Ah, Chelsea Don. That was our first stop. That place has now actually reset, meaning we can go back and hit them up again, I'm pretty sure. Well, it's about once a month. The place is reset every month. There's no real sliding scale of demand. If you dump a bunch of supplies in a place and the price drops, you just have to wait for X amount of days and everything will just reset back to default. Like I said, the market system looks complicated, but not really. Every every 30 days, everything resets back to where it was, or if there was a pirate influence, like you lost a shipment, that will reset every 30 to 90 days. I'm not sure exactly on that one, but it's all just timers, basically. So we can go round and round and do that again and again and again. However, we need to be able to access about 5,200 supplies and 5,400 fuel every month, which is... A big ask. That is a big ask, especially when you can't hit up most of the major trading colonies, which is why we have two planets. And why our stockpile drawdown was only, well, only 227,000 this month. It was 700 grand the month before. Uh, though we've still got quite a bit of supplies in stockpile, but now the plan would be we would just go straight back into the gate, uh, go back to here. Then once we get back into the gate, we would immediately just run back to our home colonies, stock back up on supplies and fuel, and then do the whole sequence all over again. We can churn out 1.3 million in profit every single run we do, so great for about oh, a year or so. And then we use that to pump up our colonies. Wait, no, wrong one. And actually, no, we'll go to nothing to see here first. And in fact, stay out of Ludic Church's range. We don't annoy the people we're staying with right now. So if we manage this, you can see we've only got 700 supplies there. Where's fuel? Bloody pirates. Ah, okay, so we lost some fuel. This place is not generating fuel, so that's unfortunate. Still generating lots of supplies, so we'll still make lots of money out of this place. And then we can also pop over to Burble and top up some more. Oof, that's a bit sparse. Like, we need, what, 5,200? This is the reason why I don't sell anything for less than triple profit. Literally finding enough of everything is going to be your biggest concern. Also, you won't be able to spend your money fast enough. Right now, if we go under Colony Info, in Heavy Industry still has 11 days left. Spaceport has 41. If we check out our other colony, it has 11 days left on fuel production and 41 on Spaceport. At which point, we're just waiting for the colony to go up a growth level, which at 11% growth will be... Oh, it's going to be a while. All right, so with the ability to crank out 1.3 million a month in profits, 
that will allow us to catapult to, to some more of the exploitative stuff we can do later on. Uh, let me do some running around for a bit. After running around like a headless chicken and trading for ages, we've got about uh, six million. All of the places have recovered now, their starports are back up and running, so we can't really exploit them the way we did. I mean, we could go back in and start raiding them in, but I think we've got six million out of it. That's enough to tide us over. If we need it, we can always go back and just activate that whole loop again. Yeah, that was extremely broken. One thing to realize is actually heavy armaments, drugs, and heavy machinery are actually pretty good to sell to them as well. And this place over here, Asher, is actually fairly well stocked in heavy armaments, drugs, and uh, machinery. So, with all of that done, it's time to get on to the fun parts. We're going to use our marines to do some brutalizing of some of the colonies and steal some stuff we'd like to get our hands on. Popping over to our gate transporter here, we're going to head over to Eventide, Samara Star System. This is where we're going to, uh, well, maybe do a little bit of testing first. See, I'm not sure just how powerful our troops are just yet, but this should be a good place to at least start. Now, let's stay hidden, and do they have a comms relay here? Uh, they have a sensor array. We can introduce uh, sensor blips into that if we really need to do to distract some of the local fleets while we do some horrific things to the planets around here. And uh, nope, nope, don't care about any of that. Uh, let's see. Okay, this place is looking. Nope, it's not abandoned. Who are you? You are unidentified fleet. I'm going to assume you're pirates. Bad people. Whatever. Who cares? And uh, let's have a look here. If we go down and have a look at the planet. You can see they have something we want. See that little blue thing there? That's a fullerene spool. Increases in colonies accessibility by 30%. They also have a patrol HQ, they have uh, ground batteries, they've got decent defenses. This place looks pretty nasty. So, let's see if we can do our uh, launch a raid. And we would like to acquire valuables like, ooh, destroy the orbital solar array? I am not a monster. Let's just grab the fullerene spool. Yeah, yeah, we'll just nick that and go. Uh, yeah, launch raid. So, yeah, we lost 236 marines, which is unfortunate. We reduced their stability by two, and we got ourselves a fullerene spool. That was uh, not really as bad as I thought it was going to be. Perfect. Well, if that's the case, uh, there's a couple other places we'd like to hit up for maybe a couple of things. First off, under fuel. Producers, there's only a few of them, and I say we go over to Najakita, whatever. Let's pop over to this place. Uh, they've got themselves a synchrotron core that I'd like to try and steal. Might be a little bit more difficult than this one, but I think we can give it a shot. This might be a little bit trickier. This place is going to be much better guarded. Uh, or not. Let's see what they've got. They have a nav beacon and they have a relay. Hmm, is that it? Damn it. Actually, plus two for the burn level in system? Uh, we can take that. Let's uh, hack that. This gives us the same ad same advantages. Uh, they'll eventually figure it out, but uh, yeah, we don't care. And what that means is, let's go over here for a second. We'll turn off stealth. We can now burn at speed 15. <laughs> oh my god, that's our basic speed is 15. Uh, that's um, That's a thing that we can do now. That makes us incredibly hard to catch. Okay, patrol, convoy, convoy, patrol. Oh, God. Right, we're going to have to, like, find some way of drawing them away from that place. Are you guys in a fight or something? Engage in hostilities. Oh, you two guys are fighting. All right, let me uh, peruse around this place for a while. We're going to have to wait until this place frees up. And then we are going to have to dip in and raid the bejesus out of that station. Oh, oh, they're running away. Who are you? Oh, the mercantile convoy might actually mess this up. Consider your military options. Actually, never mind. Launch raid. Um, we would like to acquire valuables. How much is this going to cost us? Moderate losses. I am terrified to think what that is like after the last place. Uh, one second. Let's just see if we can buy a few uh, marines to replace to replace the losses we're inevitably going to get here. Anyway, yes, there we were. Yes, uh, launch raid. We want to grab the synchrotron core. This thing allows you to produce more fuel. It's like one of those very unique items, hard to get your hands on. We're just gonna raid them. Could stand a Spory's point, but nah. Only cost us 424 marines. Uh, I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, this will mess up their colony a little bit. It reduces their stability, which reduces their access, I believe. Wait, no, we should probably knock that. No, no. That. Gives, that will actually mess up the fuel economy as well. There's going to be less fuel production going on. 
Oof, taking out that planet's going to be tough. However, you, as you can see, we're producing fuel down here, but our fuel production is about to double. In fact, it may go up from two to five in very short order. Let me find a gate somewhere and head back home. Seriously, 15 speed and we're not even doing a sustained burn. That's just 15 is the base movement speed we get in this system when we do that. That is just incredible. I love it. A quick pop back home and we should be able to chuck this into our... Oh, who are you? Mercantile convoy, don't care. Right, manage colony. Give me resources. You, fuel production, install item. Oh, it requires no atmosphere. I'm a moron. I should have put my fuel production on another planet as well. Uh, though what else can you build on one of these planets? Since I planned this so badly, I meant to put my fuel production on the other planet, got distracted and ended up on this gas giant. I was supposed to put it on the one that didn't have an atmosphere on it. Should have stuck to the plan. Uh, never mind. Okay, so this one here, the fuel production is kind of useless. We'll stick in mining. When it comes to our actual barren planet, though, I want to put in a patrol HQ and then upgrade that, which will cost a slot, which we can afford. This is a size 4 colony. It'll be size 5 at some point. Hmm. So, you know what? We will put the fuel in here. So later on, we're going to need industry, a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, okay, we'll put in the fuel. Fine. Because it's 450 grand. We'll also upgrade this to a battle station. That'll cost us a, ooh, a half a million. Yeah, this is why you need the money pumps. This stuff is so expensive to pump money into. It's fine. Their planets are going pretty fast. And while that's going on, let's start crippling the fuel production of other people. Oh, and spending our character points. We've got two of them from all of the trading. So I think one thing we want to do is get industrial planning. This gives plus one to all of our production. We will confirm that. Thank you kindly. Uh, this reduces fuel consumption, which I'm not even sure is worthwhile. Hmm. And the last one we could potentially get is... Ah, repairs. Our ships repair a bit faster. You know what? We'll, we'll just take the fuel. So to make up for that blunder, we're going to colonize a third planet, because of course we are. We're just going to establish a colony here, yet, 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 200 grand. Oh, damn it, what do we call this one? Totally innocent. Just totally innocent. That's what this place shall be called. Uh, yeah, for structures, we are going to add in... Well, we've already got heavy industry. Uh, you can do refining. Why not? Also put in a way station for you when the time comes. Hazard pay and a free port. Yes. Oh. Click to remove building. No, I don't want to remove the building. Also, we do have on our hands that uh, fullerene spool. We're going to use it on this colony because we want it to, all the colonies to grow as quickly as possible. Once they're level 5, we can stop being allied to the Ludic Church. It's not that they're nice people, it's just that, well, they're not nice people. Wow, Hegemony Expedition is going towards nothing to see. Why? There's nothing to see there. Stay away. After hanging around outside for a bit, this place has finished its spaceport and started on the refining. And what we can do is we can install an item. And we want to install the fullerene spool. Increases accessibility by 30%. Currently, it's at 27. Growth is at 4.67. We throw this in. Increases growth by about 1.5 percentage points and makes this place more accessible and more stable. And we can transfer that between the places if we want. This just helps make this place grow a bit faster, which is nice because, well, we wanted to catch up with the other two. She probably should have built this place first. All right, with that one up and running, it's time to go murder ride some people. Actually, no, it's time to actually end this episode because I've gone over clock again. Next up, the plan is rather simple, if a, a little hard to figure out for sure. Uh, we've got this many fuel producers. There's five of them. Uh, there's the hegemony one at whatever. We've already raided this place. I say we raid them into the ground. Like, we've got to raid one, two, three, four, five. Five colonies. We have to raid them and break them. We have to drive their stability so low that they never recover and they never produce fuel again, leaving us as the sole fuel producer. I don't think we'll actually produce fuel either because that would give us a better market to sell. You know what? We can worry about that in the next one. For now, I'm, I'm liking how this is working out. We have not actually got involved in a single ship combat yet. We are completely stealthy, no one even knows who we are, and we've actually managed to form a few colonies, all without ever turning on a transponder. Yeah, Kaiser Soze. It works. Eh? I hope you enjoyed Good luck. Mm -hmm.